In November 2000, a horrific discovery was made. A decapitated body was found in a forest near Kiev, Ukraine. This gruesome discovery set off a nationwide outcry, demanding justice and answers. The investigation took a dramatic turn when secret recordings emerged, allegedly from the office of then-President Leonid Kukma. These tapes suggested high-level government involvement this murder, leading to what became known as the Cassette Scandal. This is the story of a journalist whose disappearance in the year sparked a series of events that would forever change the landscape of Ukrainian politics and media. Join me as we unravel the mysterious disappearance of Georgi Gangatz. Georgi Gangadz was born on May 21, 1969 in Tbilisi, the capital of the Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic, to a Georgian architect and a Ukrainian dentist from Lviv. Gangadz had a twin brother who was kidnapped from the hospital shortly after their birth. He was an exceptional athlete during his school years, making it to the Soviet Reserve Olympic team for the 100 and 200 meters. Growing up in the Soviet Union during a time of great political change, Gangadz was exposed to the complexities of power and governance from a young age. His upbringing in a society marked by censorship and propaganda played a crucial role in shaping his values and his unwavering commitment to truth and transparency. Fluent in Ukrainian, Russian, Georgian, and English, he enrolled in the Foreign Languages Institute in Tbilisi in 1986 specializing in English. However, his studies were interrupted in 1987 when he was drafted into the Soviet border troops, serving in Turkmenistan near the Iranian border. In May 1989, Gangadz was discharged from the border troops. In 1989 and 1990, Georgi traveled to the Baltic states and Ukraine in an attempt to drum up foreign support for Georgia's independence from the Soviet Union. As part of his tour, in September 1989 he attended the first Congress of the People's Movement of Ukraine in Kiev, where he represented for Free Georgia. In 1992, Georgi Gangadz established the Georgian Culture Association in Lviv, named after the Bagrationi dynasty functioning as an informational center. It was during the registration of this organization that he met Myroslava Petrushin, who would become his second wife. Together, they co-authored an article about the Georgian Civil War title, Tragedy of Leaders, published in the Lviv newspaper Post Post Up. Later that year, Gangadz returned to Tbilisi to visit his mother, a nurse working in a hospital. Initially planning to leave political activism for business, he was persuaded to stay in journalism after discussions with various individuals and encouragement from his mother. Influenced by these events, Gangadz created a documentary title, The Pain of My Land, focusing on the Georgian Civil War. In February 1993, this documentary was broadcast on the Ukrainian channel UT3. From 1996 to 1997, Georgi Gangadz worked for the Ukrainian television channel STB and later at the Kiev-based radio station Continent, where he hosted a show named First Round with Jory Gangadz. His independent stance attracted negative attention from President Leonid Kukma's authoritarian government. During the 1999 presidential election, Gangadz faced threats including being blacklisted for his critical commentaries. At this time, he also served as a spokesperson for the leader of the Progressive Socialist Party of Ukraine, Natalia Vitrenko. In April 2000, Gangadz co-founded the news website Ukrainska Pravda to circumvent the government's tightening grip on mainstream media. The site specialized in political news and commentary, focusing on President Kukma, influential oligarchs, and the state-controlled media. It emerged as a critical platform for objective information in Ukraine, especially after other opposition outlets were muzzled post-election. Gangad's work at Ukrainska Pravda was pioneering, revealing uncomfortable truths about political elites. 
His articles were incisive, often directly implicating high-ranking officials and corrupt practices. As his profile grew, so too did the risks associated with his journalism. Gangads had long been aware of the dangers he faced. He spoke openly about the sense of being watched, the unnerving feeling of being followed. His friends and colleagues recalled Gangad's growing apprehension, a mix of determination and the palpable sense of danger that shadowed his every move. There were reports that he was being tailed, suspicious vehicles lingering near his home and office, and strange phone calls that left him uneasy. On the fateful night of September 16, 2000, Gongads left a friend's house in Kiev. He stepped into the cool evening air, a man on a mission, perhaps contemplating his next move in the intricate chess game of political journalism. It was an ordinary evening by all accounts, but it would be the last time anyone saw Georgi Gongads. He vanished, as if swallowed up by the night leaving behind a trail of questions that would soon engulf an entire nation in a quest for truth. His disappearance sent shockwaves across Ukraine and the international community. It wasn't just a journalist that had vanished. It was as if a beacon of truth had been extinguished, leaving behind a darkness that begged to be illuminated. The search for Gangads would soon unearth more than anyone could have anticipated opening a Pandora's box of political scandal and intrigue. The disappearance of Georgi Gangad soon morphed into a complex investigation that would unearth a scandal reaching the highest echelons of power in Ukraine. Initially, the response to Gangad's disappearance was marked by a disturbing lethargy from the authorities, raising suspicions about their involvement or indifference. As international and domestic pressure mounted, however, the investigation gained momentum. Two months after Gangad's vanished, a horrific discovery was made. A decapitated body was found in a forest in the Taraska district, about 70 kilometers from Kiev. The body was badly decomposed, making identification difficult. However, it was eventually confirmed to be that of Gangad's. The gruesome nature of his death sent ripples of shock and anger throughout Ukraine and the international community, turning the case into a symbol of the dangers faced by journalists challenging authority. But it was the emergence of the infamous cassette scandal that blew the case wide open. In November 2000, a former bodyguard of President Leonid Kukma, Mykola Melnichenko, revealed audio recordings that would send shockwaves through the nation. These recordings, allegedly made in President Kukma's office, seemed to implicate him and other high-ranking officials in the orchestration of Gangad's abduction. The tapes contained conversations that suggested a direct link between the government and the plot against Gangad's. Voices resembling those of Kukma, his chief of staff, and other officials were heard discussing ways to silence Gangad's. The gravity of these revelations was astounding. They suggested not just a cover-up, but a state-sponsored assassination of a journalist. The fallout was immediate and intense. The so-called cassette scandal plunged Ukraine into political crisis. Massive protests erupted, with citizens demanding accountability and transparency from their government. The incident became a catalyst for the Orange Revolution in 2004 a pivotal moment in Ukraine's journey toward democracy. In the ensuing investigations, several individuals were arrested and convicted in connection with Gangad's murder between 2001 and 2011. In May 2001, Interior Minister Yuri Smirnov announced that the murder had been solved. It was attributed to a random act of violence committed by two hooligans, with links to a gangster called Cyclops. Both of the killers were said to now be dead. The claim was dismissed by the opposition and by the government's own prosecutor general, whose office issued a statement denying Smirnov's claims. In June 2004, the government claimed that a convicted gangster identified only as K had confessed to Gangad's murder, although there was no independent confirmation of the claim. 
The ongoing investigation received a setback when a key witness died of spinal injuries apparently sustained while in police custody. Gangad's death became a major issue in the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election, in which the opposition candidate Viktor Yushchenko pledged to solve the case if he became president. Yushchenko did become president following the subsequent Orange Revolution and immediately launched a new investigation, replacing the prosecutor general. In a significant development in March 2005, Ukrainian President Viktor Yushchenko revealed that the suspected perpetrators of journalist Georgi Gangad's murder had been apprehended. Prosecutor General Sviatoslav Piskin confirmed the case's resolution, implicating Interior Ministry employees in the crime. Among the accused were two senior police officers from the ministry's Criminal Investigations Directorate. The plot thickened with the involvement of former Interior Minister Yuri Kravchenko, who was found dead under mysterious circumstances, sparking debates over the nature of his death. Amidst swirling allegations, Kravchenko left behind a note claiming his innocence and pointing to political machinations at the highest level, involving President Leonid Kukma, who has consistently denied these accusations. In mid-March 2008, the three former police officers were sentenced to prison for the murder of Gongads. Mikola Protasov was given a sentence of 13 years, while Valery Kostenko and Oleksandr Popovic were each handed 12-year terms. The other main suspect, ex-police officer, Oleksii Pukak was believed to have fled abroad and therefore charged but not on trial. In a pivotal turn in the long-standing mystery of journalist Georgi Gangad's murder, July 22, 2009, marked the arrest of ex-police officer Oleksii Pukak in Zydermir Oblast. Pukak, who had a significant role in the Ukrainian Interior Ministry, was found living a deceptive normalcy in the residence of Lydia Zagorolko. Initial reports buzzed with Pukak's alleged confessions implicating high-ranking officials and his knowledge of the whereabouts of Gangad's missing head. However, this narrative took a twist as Pukak's lawyer refuted these claims. The plot thickened when, near Bila Tsirkva, fragments of a skull were discovered, potentially linking back to Gangad's, as per Pukaka's directions. This discovery only deepened the intrigue surrounding the case. Amidst legal and political turmoil, Gangad's mother, Olesia, remained skeptical of the findings, questioning their authenticity. Meanwhile, the case spiraled into a web of accusations and denials. Pukaka's trial, commencing on July 7, 2011, was shrouded in secrecy, closed off from the public eye. In a dramatic courtroom revelation, Pukak claimed that the order for the murder came from none other than the former president Kukma, a statement that reverberated through the corridors of power. However, the Petrsk District Court's decision to disregard the testimony of Mikola Melnichenko, former bodyguard of Kukma, further muddled the waters. As the case trudged through a labyrinth of legal proceedings and contentious claims, the truth behind the tragic fate of Georgi Gangads remained elusive, encapsulated in a saga of intrigue, power, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Georgi Gangads' legacy lives on in the annals of journalism and the ongoing fight for freedom of expression. His disappearance and murder symbolized the perilous path trodden by those who dared to speak truth to power. As we reflect on this story, let us remember the courage of Georgi Gangads and the unyielding spirit of those who continue to seek justice in his name. The story of Georgi Gangads is more than a mystery. It is a testament to the power of the truth and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of darkness. Thank you for joining me on this journey into one of Ukraine's most enduring mysteries. Until next time, keep seeking the truth.